welcome to the first webinar from Vanderbilt University coming at you live from the Ingram Commons. We'll give people a couple of minutes to log in and get settled and then we'll get started. If you're just joining us, welcome. You're in the right place. If you're here for the first year um, webinar from Vanderbilt, we're just giving people a minute to log in and then we'll get started. All right, I think I'm gonna begin. Um, welcome, my name is Melissa Grisolfi. I'm the Dean of Residential Colleges and Residential Education and the Dean of the Martha Rivers Ingram Commons at Vanderbilt. Um, welcome to our first webinar in the series. I'm joined tonight by the Director of First Year Experience, Natalie Erb. Um, and together, we're just gonna share with you a little bit about what you might want to start doing this summer as you prepare to join us on campus at Vanderbilt. I know that some people on this call probably just had graduation last week, and if so, congratulations. Um, and depending on where you are in the country, some of you haven't graduated yet. So it may seem a little early to start telling you what to do to prepare for your next transition. Um, but one of the things we've learned over the years is that the more you know in advance, the easier and better your transition is. Um, everyone right now is um, likely experiencing a huge mix of emotions from excitement to anxiety. Um, and the more information you have, the better able you are to manage all of those things. So what we have planned for you tonight is a relatively brief presentation, just to give you an overview of the things that um, we hope you're doing over the summer. And then Natalie and I are gonna open it up for Q and A. And so, um, there should be a feature that you should be able to see at the bottom of your screen that says Q&A. If you have any questions, just shoot them in there and uh, we'll try to get through as many of them as we can. So um, one more note is that we are recording tonight's webinar. And so if you uh, want to return to it or if you know someone who wanted to attend but wasn't able, well, it will be available online and people can watch it again. So with that, I'm gonna share my screen and get started. Hopefully get started, okay. Um, so again, if you're just joining us, I know a couple of people just, uh, just joined. My name is Melissa Grisolfi. I'm the Dean of Residential Colleges. Uh, the class of 2027 will be my fifth first year class uh, joining us on the Commons. And so while I would never say that I have seen it all because every year students have the, like just delight me with new ideas and experiences, we have been doing this a while on the Commons. In fact, this year is the 15th anniversary of the Ingram Commons. And so um, certainly everyone is in good hands. Again, I'm joined tonight by Natalie Erb, who is the director of the first year experience. And Natalie has similarly been doing for longer than me, actually. I believe this is her 10th year on the Commons. So um, we have a lot of things to share with you and we hope they'll be helpful. So, and hopefully I can use my um, PowerPoints and then we'll be able to proceed. Oh my goodness, sorry. Okay, here we go. Um, so just some information for you all. This is the first of two webinars that we have planned. So today is May 24th. So this is the webinar to help you think about what you wanna do over the summer. Um, and then we'll have another webinar in July. And that is more of a deep dive into what exactly happens here, what you can expect in terms of support. Um, we are always open for questions if you have questions, but just to know that that much more, like much more detailed webinar is coming in about two months. 
In the meantime, I recommend that you follow us on social media. We largely use Instagram, so just look for Res Colleges. Um, and it's actually a lovely record of the things that happen on uh, in Res Colleges if you wanted to take a look. But in particular, we have um, a new video series every week in May. It's called the Informational Series, um, where we share information about what's happening here and what to expect. If there's something that you wanted to see that you missed, you can always look um, for the recordings. They're posted at vu.edu backslash class of 2027. Um, and, and actually everything that we share digitally that we record is gonna be posted there. So just to begin, I just wanna give you a bit of an overview about what it looks like when you come here. Who is the community that you're joining? All first year students live on the Martha Rivers Ingram Commons. Um, and each uh, student lives in one of 10 residence halls. Each residence hall has a faculty head who lives there with their family in an apartment. I also live on the commons with my family. Um, I, have, I live in a house that's right next to the commons that people you'll pass hundreds of times while you're here. Um, and together, all of us, uh, the commons um, is located on Peabody campus which is also the, where the School of Education is located. I'm also a professor in the School of Education, so it's very convenient for me. Um, and then we are just directly across the street from main campus. And students usually have classes on both sides of campus. In the commons, um, their first community that you'll really connect with is your hall community. And your hall community has um, a floor residential advi resident advisor, um, and then each team of RAs in every house is led by a head RA who we call an HR. And these are the wonderful humans who've been appointed as HRAs, head RAs this year. And the head RAs are people who've had been RAs for multiple years and have expertise and training in supporting students in staying safe and forming a hall community. A second important community is the community that you form in your house. So again, each student is assigned to live in one of 10 houses and each house has, um, is led by a faculty head. Our faculty heads come from all over the university. We are really deliberate in inviting faculty members who teach in all different colleges, who specialize in very different things and who therefore create really different programs in their houses to try to create special communities. Um, every faculty head lives full time year round in the residence hall with their families. And one of the very special things about living on the commons is the intergenerational feeling of the commons. And so right now the campus is empty because students have left. So all of the kids on the commons have occupied the space. They were playing four square in the driveway just last night. Um, but when students are here, they're, if, if you are someone who likes kids, their most favorite thing is when undergraduates come and join them in their soccer games or whatever they're playing. Um, but you also see the faculty heads and their families in the dining hall, um, like hanging out. And then of course, with the programming that faculty heads offer. So each week, every house has a study break. And the study break is in the same day, same time, every week, it has a theme, always involves food. And it's an opportunity to connect and gather informally. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a break from what you're doing every day, um, but it's an opportunity to connect with the people in your house, to connect with your faculty head, and often with a guest who's been invited to attend your study break. In addition to the house activities that happen, there are myriad activities that happen on the commons. So we have um, dinners, we have lectures, we have um, events. Um, all of these different events are opportunities for you to connect with people who may have something in common with you, or maybe you choose to attend an event because you don't know one thing about it at all. Uh, one of the things that we do every single week is a Dean's dinner. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a dinner that's at my house. Um, I have a big dining room table that seats 20 people. And every week we have a different guest and a different theme. Um, I'm biased because, you know, Dean's dinners happen at my house. So I think they're the most fun thing, but they really are an amazing opportunity to connect with a guest, to connect with me and to connect with 19 other people who you might not otherwise have met. Um, another big thing that we do on the commons to help build community is called the commons cup. 
if it sounds a little bit like Hogwarts, that's because it is a little bit like Hogwarts um, in the sense that each house is competing against the other houses to see who will ultimately be the winner um, of the Commons Cup. So for now for two years in a row, West House has been the winner of the Commons Cup. So they're the house to beat. Um, the way you participate in the Commons Cup is just by participating in the activities that we organize. So there are five categories of events that um, go into the Commons Cup, academics, athletics, community involvement, service, and sustainability. And the events range from something that might sound kind of traditional from athletics, um, like a kickball tournament or a frisbee third tournament, all the way to things that are really about giving back to the community. So one of the ways that houses earn points for service is, for example, by participating in um, a day of service that the university um, participates in along with other local universities on Martin Luther King Day. So all year long, houses are participating in these events. And the goal really is to get to know people in your house by, by participating in these events with them and then getting to know people across the commons as your house engages in friendly competition. Um, the Commons Cup winners are, are uh, announced in the spring at our end of year event that we call the Block Party. Another community that you'll develop almost right away comes through Vanderbilt Visions. And Vanderbilt Visions is our extended orientation program. Each first year student is assigned to a section of Visions. Um, each vision section has about 18 students. And it's led by a team, a faculty member and an upper division student. And that team together leads their visions group through about 12, 10 to 12 weeks of programming. We start during orientation. In fact, you're likely to meet your uh, view sectors during move-in because student view sectors try to come up and meet every single um, person in their visions group. And then visions programming begins on Sunday, the, the first of full day of orientation. And this is a group um, that is an opportunity for you to meet people who are likely not in your house, not on your hall. Maybe you'll never have a class with these people, um, but it's your a first opportunity to think about what does it mean to be a Vanderbilt student? There's three big themes to Visions. One of the first important thing that we do in Visions is think about how we build community. Um, Vanderbilt is a very, a very diverse student body. Most people come to Vanderbilt having only lived in one community before. And so a real question is, how do I form friendships and bonds and a, an inclusive community with people whose experiences are so different from mine? So that's one of the first important things that we do in Visions. A second important thing we do in Visions is really help think about how you transition, how you make that transition from high school to college. In so many ways, you're ready to be at Vanderbilt. And also as a first year student, there's likely to be a lot of things that you've never had to balance before. So you, you have to all by yourself figure out how to make sure your clothing is clean, how to make sure you eat, how to budget your time when you don't have classes every day, how to make decisions about which student orgs to, uh, to join and like when to just hang out with your friends and play video games. For almost all first year students, it's the first time you've had that much freedom and that much choice. And it takes a little while for almost everyone to figure out how to manage all of that. And Vanderbilt Visions is one of the places that you can start to get some support to think about how do I make this transition? And then finally, and very importantly, Vanderbilt Visions is one of the places that we make sure you're aware of the wealth of resources that are available on campus. If you have a need, Vanderbilt has an office for it. Um, in fact, we have so many services and so many supports that sometimes it can be overwhelming the wealth of opportunities. And so Vanderbilt Visions is one of the places where you can go to two experts to say, I need help with this, where do I go? Um, in Visions, as I mentioned, we share a lot about the academic and social opportunities at Vanderbilt, some of the challenges that you're going to, um, to face and some strategies to, to manage those um, challenges. Um, resources, and really to think about new ideas and perspectives of the community. Vanderbilt Visions is going to appear automatically on your um, schedule once registration opens. Um, we register you for that, and it is a random assignment based on your class schedule. We try to make our visions groups as diverse as possible. Um, so that you're not only with students who are in the same program as you or in the same house as you. 
Um, you'll see that that Visions only meets on Mondays or Tuesdays and always in the afternoon or evening. Um, if you have any questions about Visions, you can always email visions at vanderbilt.edu. So now to the advertised purpose of this webinar, which is what should you be doing this summer? Um, so first of all, the first and most important place to start and end and everywhere in between is by consulting the road to Vanderbilt. This, uh, if you haven't already received it in the mail, you should be receiving it in the mail shortly. Um, if you haven't received it and you're curious about what's in it, you can always go to vu.edu backslash class of 2027 and the content is included there. Um, crucially, I want you not just to get the road, but I want you to open the road. That's going to be your first step. And then I want you to read the road to Vanderbilt. Um, we are always happy to take questions, but we really love when you take when you call us with questions that are not answered in the road to Vanderbilt because a tremendous amount of time has been put into making sure that that has all of the information that you need for the frequently asked questions. Um, what we included in the road to Vanderbilt is a checklist, a checklist that has a timeline that you are really going to want to pay attention to. So this is really for students. This is students' timeline and students' work to get yourself ready for the academic year. Families, you really just have one thing to do. And that one thing to do is to submit your email address to vanderbilt.edu backslash families so that you can receive the Parents and Family Programs newsletter. Students, we want you to be the ones who are really running the ship for your own undergraduate experience. Um, and so some of the things you need to do is just register so you have a VU Net ID so you could do things like actually register for classes. You need to make sure you've got your immunization information ready. You actually need to start checking your Vanderbilt email regularly because we will be sending you correspondence. Um, there's a lot of little things to do. None of them are hard, but some of them are actually pretty time sensitive. And so I recommend that you open the road, read the road, and really pay attention to page four, which is the checklist. Um, international students have slightly different timelines and, and of course, slightly different um, things that they might need to um, submit to the university. So certainly pay attention to that. Um, another thing to do over the summer is to read the campus reading. So this year's campus reading is called Now is Not the Time to Panic. It's written by Kevin Wilson. Kevin Wilson is actually a Vanderbilt alum and currently a professor at Suwannee, which is a small liberal arts college actually about two hours south of campus. Um, those books should be flying to your mailboxes if you're a domestic student quite soon. Um, and there is an essay that everyone is asked to upload by August 11th. Um, included when you get your book, you'll also receive the instructions for the essay, how to submit it, and what the prompts are. The essay is very short. It's only 250 words. So um, it is not graded. You don't need to worry about it, but it is read. So every single student essay is read by the faculty and student view sector pair. Um, who are going to be the group who actually discuss the campus reading with you and they want to know what your initial reactions to the book are. So um, if you haven't received, now is not the time to panic, by, you know, mid-June, go ahead and email us at commons at, at, commons at vanderbilt.edu um, and, you know, we can figure out what's, gone to, what's going on there. Um, every fall, we host something called the Lawson Lecture, and the Lawson Lecture is always connected to the campus reading. This fall, the Lawson Lecture will be delivered by Kevin Wilson, and that's going to happen on September 10th, and all first-year students and all um, student and faculty view sectors will attend the Lawson Lecture. If you really love the book, then you'll have an opportunity to have dinner with D Professor Wilson at my house following the lecture. Another thing that's happening this summer is something called Commodore Launches. And so a Commodore Launch is hosted by the Vanderbilt Alumni Association. And it is, it's a party. It's a party for, um, that's regional. And again, it's hosted by members of the Alumni Association who invite current alumni members who are in the area and current and incoming students. Um, we don't have 
the Commodore launches in every single city in the United States, but they actually are in, in every single state and they try to um, host Commodore launches in as many cities as possible. So if there is one happening near you, you will receive an email about it and I highly encourage you to attend. And I just want to acknowledge how weird and awkward it is to go to a place that you're unfamiliar with to meet with a group of people that you've maybe never met. Um, but the Commodore launches are actually a lovely opportunity to get to know some of the people who you will then see in a couple of weeks on campus. And I can't tell you how many times I've talked to students on campus and said, so nice to meet you. How did you two meet? And they say, well, we actually met at the Commodore launch. Um, it's also sort of convenient if you're meeting people who live sort of close to you at home, because then sometimes you can coordinate travel. So if there is a Commodore launch that is happening near you, I highly encourage you to attend. They're very fun. Okay, I'm gonna go through a couple of frequently asked questions, um, and then I'm gonna open it up to broader questions. So one frequently, so we have lots of, obviously lots of frequently asked questions about housing. So first and foremost, it's important to know that um, housing is managed by the Office of Housing and Residential Experience, which is a different office from residential colleges. So you can always ask us questions and we'll direct you to the right office, but um, that's a whole office that's in, char in charge of housing. So as a reminder, all first year students live on the Martha Rivers Ingram Commons. You cannot, um, you cannot request which residence hall you live in. I get this question all the time. I just want you all to know that no matter which residence hall you live in, students tell me that their house is the best house. It doesn't mean that they don't think that the houses are different, um, but you really do form a really strong house community that really does, I think, make everyone grateful for the house they've been assigned to. Um, your housing application is going to be due by June 1st, and all information about that can be found at the O'Hare website. Um, and you'll find out about your housing assignments and move-in instructions around August 1st. So again, as I mentioned, it's going to be really important to pay attention to these deadlines and to pay attention to your, e your Vanderbilt emails for students, your new Vanderbilt email to get instructions. In terms of classes and registration. So there are four undergraduate colleges at Vanderbilt. There's the Blair School of Music, the College of Arts and Science, uh, Peabody College, which is the School of Education and the School of Engineering. Um, and so each of these colleges is managed by a dean um, who's in charge of the academic um, programming for each college. And you will receive, based on which school you've been accepted into, school-specific course registration packets they should be coming your way pretty soon, actually, late May, early June. And those packets are gonna include information about when you can register, um, how to think about matching your class choices to requirements, and then how to contact your advisor, your academic advisor. This works differently for each college. And so if you are a student um, coming into the College of Arts and Science, but you know somebody who's already a current student in engineering, they may not actually be very helpful to you about registration because the exact um, the exact way it works is a bit different from college to college. So it's really important that you pay attention to your own course registration packet. Um, I do want to just tell you straight out that first year students are the last students to register. And this always causes a tiny bit of angst because a class that you might really want to register for, you, it might be full by the time you get a chance to register. So a couple of things to know. When we think about this from the perspective of the system, this makes a lot of sense because incoming first year students have eight semesters to make sure they take all the classes they want to take. Seniors, Rising seniors have two more semesters, right? So they really need to make sure that they can get the classes they need. Um, and so that is how registration works in reverse order. So the students who have the fewest amount of semesters left register first. So first year um, students are the last to register. Um, there's, first of all, absolutely, you can get on the wait list for a class that you're interested in. There's a lot of movement on these wait lists. So just because you're waitlisted doesn't mean you won't get into the class you want. 
But the other thing that's really good about this is that sometimes um, you end up taking a class that you wouldn't have thought to take. And so often that becomes the class that is your favorite for the semester. So remember that we organize across all four undergraduate colleges, those your programs of study are organized based on the assumption that you are going to explore and we want you to explore. So try to get the classes you want, of course, but please do not worry over much. If there's a class that you really wanted that you couldn't get, you will absolutely get into that class eventually. And in the meantime, you might discover a passion that you didn't even know existed. Um, okay, in terms of timeline, for if you're an international student, your move-in day is Wednesday, August 16th. Um, and that also begins our special, inter our special orientation just for international students. Uh, for domestic students, uh, for most domestic students, move in is Saturday, August 19th. Um, if you haven't Googled Vanderbilt student move in, I recommend you do it because our move in is very special. Um, and uh, there's lots of videos online to give you a sense of what it will feel like. Um, there's a, I'll just say there's a great big welcome and over 1000 um, returning students volunteer to help with move in every year. Um, Saturday also begins common view orientation, which is our orientation for all first year students. Um, on Saturday, we ask families to say their farewells by five o'clock. Um, because then we have a special orientation and reception just for parents and families that begin at 530. Um, Starting on Sunday, August 20th, students are pretty heavily scheduled with orientation activities. So as families are making their travel plans, um, there's really not much for you to be doing on Sunday. So that's a really good day for you to be scheduling your trip to return home. Um, if you have questions that we have, we're, we're gonna answer some questions, but if you have questions that have not been answered tonight, um, there's a lot of ways you can get answered. And so parents and families, we have a helpline. You can always email welcome at vanderbilt.edu. As I mentioned, it would be good to get your email registered with parents and families at vanderbilt.edu backslash families. And of course, we have a welcome website for everyone. It's easy to remember vanderbilt.edu backslash welcome. For new students, we have some overlapping resources and some slightly different resources. So there's a new student hotline different from the parent and family helpline. Um, and that number is here. Again, you can always email welcome at Vanderbilt, check out the welcome website. Um, and then of course, um, please consult the road to Vanderbilt, um, which you can find at vu.edu backslash class of 2027. So with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen. Um, and um, invite Natalie back on so that we can answer some of the questions that you all have posed. So just as a reminder, um, down at the bottom of your screen, there is a Q&A sign. And if you have questions, just go ahead and write them in there and we will do our best to answer them. We've got some great questions in here already. Um, I'm gonna start with some of the questions that follow up on some of the things you already talked about. Um, so first and foremost, there's a question in here about visions. Is visions a class? Do you get credit or a grade or is it more social informational? That's a great question. It's all of the things mostly. So visions is a class, it's a requirement. Um, it appears on your schedule and you will, there are things you have to do for it. Um, but it, for example, read the campus reading and submit an essay. Um, so it's a mandatory part of your, of just like any class is mandatory. It is a zero credit class, which is the only time that you'll have something like that. Um, and that's because it's not graded. We don't give you a grade. You just need to show up. Um, it is both informational and social. So we really are intentional about the ways that we think about building community. And so um, Visions is one of the places that you build community. It's one of the places where you get to say like, I'm actually kind of lonely right now. Or like, uh, I made a big mistake and I stayed up all night talking to someone and now I'm exhausted and I didn't do very well on my quiz, 
right? And so those are the kinds of conversations we have. We also have celebratory conversations, but those are the kinds of things that happen in visions. But we also talk about how are you studying for tests? Are you going to office hours? Um, have you taken advantage of tutoring services? We'll talk about the campus reading. So it's really kind of like all of the things. And that's actually what residential colleges really is about. Residential colleges, we think of as a bridge between the academic and the social. It's the place where we start to think about how does our academic development, um, how do we develop academically outside of the classroom? And Visions is one of the first places that we do that. Great, thank you. Um, there's also a question here. You talked a little bit about when students can expect to receive their information packets about course registration, but just generally, when does the actual registration take place? Um, I don't know the answer to that actually, but it will say in your registration packet, do you know the answer to that, Natalie? It's usually mid to late June. See, this is why it takes, takes a <laughs> um, Okay, and then we talked a little bit about um, same vein, course registration, what college we're in. Sometimes perhaps we've made a choice about which school we're gonna apply to and we see some majors or um, potential pathways in other colleges that we'd be more interested in. Could you talk about the process for an intra-university transfer? Yeah, so this is really common. Um, so first of all, you should know that there aren't rules about which college you take classes in or which college you major in. So you can double major in two different colleges. Actually, that happens all the time. Or you could major in a program that's in one college and minor in a program that's in another college. So you're not locked into your college. Um, but then if you decide like, oh, I really thought that I wanted to be a Spanish major, but now that I've taken courses with Professor Grisalfi in teaching and learning, what I really want to do is design learning environments for a living. I'm going to switch to Peabody. That's not a problem. Um, so you'll just meet with your academic advisor if and when you come to that decision and they'll guide you on the process for change. So as I mentioned, this is really a model of exploration. Um, students change their majors pretty regularly, um, less regularly as time goes on, but um, it is very typical for students to come in and say, I absolutely know what I wanna do. And then two months later say, well, gosh, actually I think I wanna do something different. And I just wanna say for students and parents, that's really exciting and optimal because um, most of the time, we don't really have a sense of the range of options that are available to us. So you sort of know what careers are available based on the people that you know. And you're about to join a community with 7,000 undergraduates. And I don't actually know how many faculty members we have here. So of course, you're going to be exposed to ideas and options and opportunities that you didn't even know existed. So being open to those opportunities is actually a way to take advantage of the rich resources that Vanderbilt has to offer. And that is so true. We are so well resourced. Um, I'm going to switch gears a little bit and ask about programming because you talked about all of the programs that we offer on the Ingram Commons. Could you say a little bit more about how people find out about those programs and how they sign up for them, in particular, how you would join a Dean's Dinner? Yes. Um, we advertise everything in lots of different ways because we want to make sure that people hear about it. So first and foremost, um, every Monday, there is a newsletter that comes out from the Commons that gives you a, a sense of the, the week's events. And it will just detail everything, not just that we're doing, but also the campus partners are doing. So, um, you know, we're just one office of many on campus. And you'll see when you get here, um, it, it's literally impossible to do all the things that are available. Um, so that newsletter gives you sort of a weekly digest of the options. Um, also, the Res College's Instagram feed is a really great one to uh, follow because that obviously is a little bit more facile and we're, we're posting and updating that multiple times a day. Dean's dinners are very popular events. They usually fill up almost right away. Um, it's a good incentive to check your email. And so Dean's dinners do get appear in the newsletters. We do post them and advertise them on, um, on Instagram. But I also personally send out an email for every Dean's dinner. And um, sometimes it's like 20 minutes and then it's filled up, but um, there's always a wait list for Dean's dinners. It's not that different from course registration in terms of, um, and then there's always movement, right? Because people sign up, 
because that sounds amazing. They'd really like to go. And then like the night before it comes up and they realize like, oh, I didn't realize I had this paper that was due. I didn't realize it was going to be so hard. I probably can't go to that dinner. And so they change their RSVP and then someone who's on the wait list gets to go. So um, I've never heard of anyone who wanted to attend a Dean's dinner who never got to. If you keep trying, you will definitely get to attend one. And sometimes people come to multiple. Um, but you do need to be someone who checks your email really to, um, to get um, to RSVP in time. So it's a good reason to check your email. Yes, there's a, a major theme that we want you to check your email uh, all the time. Uh, so we've got a lot of questions in the Q&A about housing. Um, and this is a, a multi-part part, um, question here. So first and foremost, is there a recommended packing list for students on what to bring to campus? And, um, and what about requesting housing accommodations or a roommate? Are those options? And if so, how would I go about doing that? Yeah, so the Office of Housing and Residential Experience, O'Hare, has um, a tremendous amount of resources on their website. So I highly recommend, and it's so many resources that you sort of need to decide and like to spend a little bit of time on the website. But I guarantee if you do, you will find an answer to any and all questions. So yes, there is a recommended packing list um, of essentials, things that you really need, what size sheets you should have. You might want to consider a fridge or a microwave and how do you get it and by when? What are some things you absolutely cannot bring? You cannot bring candles ever. Um, there's some other things you can't bring either. Um, so, you know, absolutely there's a recommended packing list. Take a look. Um, and then you can make requests, absolutely. So we do allow students to make requests for roommate um, assignments. You absolutely can request accommodations. And then O'Hare is the office that considers those accommodation requests and, you know, they, they try to do the very best they can. Um, and, and I mean, largely, I think people end up feeling pretty happy with their assignment. Um, sometimes things change during the year, status changes. That's why you have this huge staff of people who are here to support you. So, you know, you have your art. So if, if you've gotten into assignment and then something's not going right, you and your roommate are having a struggle or, you know, turns out anyway, there's things that can happen. You talk to your RA, your RA has a professional staff member called an area coordinator who helps them manage those things. And the entire line goes all the way up to the Dean of Students who's um, Vice Provost GL Black. So there's a lot of people in place to help make sure that you're in the right place. What we want is for your is for the Ingram Commons to feel like home. And so whatever it is, it's a barrier to it feeling like home. We really try to make sure that we're addressing those issues. I want to reiterate quickly just two of the deadlines themselves. So if you are looking for an accommodation for housing, the deadline to request that is June 1st. And if you want to request a roommate specifically, that deadline is June 15th. These are both listed in the road, but some of them are coming up rather quickly. So I just wanted to make sure folks had those right in mind. We try to accommodate as many of those roommate requests as possible, but it's not a guarantee. Um, there's a question in here about registering for a job if you have federal work study, how and when you might do that. So sadly, this is another question I don't know the answer to. Do you know the answer to this question, Natalie? So the how is a little bit trickier than the, um, or the how is easier than the when, like, let me say it that way. Um, there is a website called Hire a Door. Um, and if you just go to Student Employment Suite, and I'll drop a link to this in the Q&A, um, you can find the Hire a Door website. That's going to have all the available postings from campus offices who are looking to hire folks, and you can actually apply within that site. Typically in the past, um, Student Employment's also hosted a virtual job fair at the start of the fall semester. I haven't seen any details come out about that yet for this year, um, but certainly we'll send that message around once that happens. So um, not terribly difficult to find where the positions exist. Um, and usually you can also just ask any kind of office that you're interested in working with if they have any open positions. So that's a great, um, great way to get into those as well. Um, there's a question in here about how big the beds are in the rooms. And do you know the answer to that question? This is a good test. I believe I do. And I believe they are extra long twin beds. Am I right? So 
Um, we do say that a standard twin size sheet will fit the bed. Um, if you need a, a longer bed than that, you need to contact housing. Um, but a, a standard twin should fit all of the mattresses. Um, I will say I'm the kind of lady who likes a little extra cushion. So I've got a mattress topper that just makes it easier for me to use an Excel sheet, but um, certainly they should fit a standard, a standard sheet as well. All right, going back to classes, um, to what degree can I expect guidance with what classes I should select for my first semester? Um, everyone will get guidance. Um, who the guidance comes from depends on which college you're in. Um, and I highly recommend that you listen to that guidance. So one of the things that we hear all the time from advisors is that um, students come in being really certain of what they wanna do and what they wanna take. Um, and maybe aren't always listening to the advice of advisors, this is especially true for arts and science, um, about like what might be actually too much. And so um, it's a, I want everyone to remember a couple of things when you're thinking about registering for classes. Um, it act, so, so I'm a learning theorist, so forgive me because I always have to turn it into a little bit of learning theory, but part of the way we operate so functionally in this world is because so much of what we do is actually automatic. Um, and so it, once you're accustomed to living in a particular place, you are not thinking very hard about where the bathroom is or like how you actually take a shower um, because those things are just part of your everyday routine. And when you transition to college, you have to think about everything because it's new. It's true of any transition. Um, and so that thinking is actually occupying part of your mind. It's not gonna occupy part of your mind forever, but it is gonna occupy part of your mind for a little while. And so when people give you advice about thinking about, well, maybe in your first semester, you might want to not take every single hard class that you've ever dreamed of, but instead think about classes that you think are gonna be about content that you haven't learned very much about before. So that's gonna be a little challenging. And some that's about content that you know you love and are passionate about and might be a little more accessible. Um, you really want some kind of balance um, because you need to give yourself space for the cognitive energy that's required to transition. So you'll get lots of advice, um, whether it's from a faculty member or from a member of the advising committee, it's called CASPER for um, arts and science. Um, but, you know, I recommend that you listen to them. I'm a big fan of reading and listening. Um, we have another question about move in and orientation, specifically for international students. What time can students move in on Wednesday, August 16th? So international student move in is super flexible because flights are really unpredictable. And so we try to do our programming. We, de we make sure that our programming is meeting the needs of students whenever they, they move in. Um, but ideally, I, so one of the first things we have as part of international student orientation is a welcome dinner. Um, and so if students can be here by then, that's wonderful. Um, depending on the kind of resources that your family has, some people move in a little bit early, um, not onto campus, but you know, and stay in a hotel for a couple of days. Um, and some people come straight here from the airport. And so if you're an international, I was just in Portugal. And so, you know, and I arrived at 9 a.m. and I had a meeting at 2 p.m. And like, I was not my best self um, because you're tired, right? You're jet lagged. And so our, our orientation for international students, we're really thinking about that. We know that a lot of students are coming in from a much bigger time difference than six hours. And so um, we really try to be as flexible as possible because depending on where you're coming from, there aren't always a lot of options for when you can arrive. Absolutely. I'd also mention we have staff who are here on site to greet you on that day between 8 a.m. and midnight. Um, so even if you're coming in after the dinner, as you recommended, someone will be here. We also do provide a service to meet you at the airport and help you get to campus. So if you're worried about that, um, be sure to sign up for that. You sign up for um, a lift code is what it's called. Um, through the pre-arrival form, which you will need to complete if you are an international student after you've submitted your housing application, but before July 15th. So housing applications are due on June 1st. You have to complete that to even be able to access the pre-arrival form. 
But once you see that form go live, we wanna know when you're coming so we know to expect you and can meet you and make that transition a little bit easier. Um, what if I have questions about financial aid or student accounts? Who would I talk to about that? So that's a great question. And we have an office of financial aid. You should already have received communication from that office. Students are assigned a particular financial aid advisor. And that is the person who has expertise in thinking about financial aid. So go ahead and find that email and email them back. Um, if you can't find an email, then you can look at the office of financial aid at Vanderbilt. There's a contact us um, tab and just email folks. You, I mean, that is their entire job is making sure that people's financial aid is managed and questions are managed. So don't be shy and just reach out. And I know you mentioned that the move-in housing assignment and instructions will be submitted um, or received by students on or around August 1st. What about roommate requests? Is that included in that packet? Yes, so you usually get all of that information in the same packet. Um, I will say that O'Hare tries very hard to honor roommate requests. Um, I will also say that um, there is no evidence that roommate requests lead to a better roommate situation than random assignment. In fact, sometimes it's quite the opposite. And so um, if you don't know anyone coming here, you don't need to feel pressured to find someone to live with from an Instagram connection. It is absolutely fine to say, I'm just going to find a random roommate assignment. That's about what 50% of our students do. Um, and that is largely a successful model. Thank you. Going back to course registration, um, is there a way for us to see what courses are available before the registration period begins? How would we do that? Yes, so you need to have a VUNet ID and a password. Um, and then you need to look at your instructions in your course registration packet, but one of the instructions in there will be how to access the course registration portal, which we call YES, Vanderbilt YES. And on YES, you can see all the courses um, that are being offered and you can even put them in your cart um, which is kind of like, a, this is what I think I'd like to have. Um, so it allows you to sort of tag the courses you're interested in and look at their times and try to figure out your schedule. Um, so, uh, so absolutely, you, but you do need to have your VUNet ID and password in order to access that site. Right, and um, could you tell me a little bit more about the chat bot? I heard something about a chat bot. Mm -hmm. Actually, Natalie, I'm going to, you are much more of an expert about the chat bot than me. So I'm going to say, can you tell us a little bit about I chat sure bot? can. Um, my friend Cornelius, that's our chat bot. Um, you can actually chat with Cornelius. That's with a, um, Cornelius is an AI generated staff supervised chat bot. So you can actually ask any of your questions 24 seven. Um, Cornelius will do his best to answer them for you. But if he doesn't know your question gets routed to a staff member, um, I'm mentioning the chatbot because I think it's a really great resource for when our office is not open. Those helplines and hotlines that Dean Griselfi was mentioning earlier, those are not 24 seven call lines. They're open during normal office hours. So if you have a question outside of those office hours, chatting with Cornelius is a great way to get those answered. Um, and you just do that by going to vanderbilt.edu slash welcome. And there's a little tab at the bottom of the screen that says chat with Cornelius. Um, it looks like there's also a question about renter's insurance. Um, you know, that's a, a big topic right now. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that looks like? Yeah, so, um, so this is gonna be one of those things that really differs from person to person. So first of all, renter's insurance is what covers the contents of your room. So if something were to happen to Vanderbilt's building, Vanderbilt has insurance, if something were to happen to your possessions, that's only going to be covered if you have renter's insurance. So how do you get renter's insurance and who covers it? That is really going to depend wildly on individual circumstances. So uh, is it something that's covered by financial aid is a really good question for your financial aid officer because the answer will depend a little bit. Um, 
Also, it could be that your family's homeowner insurance might cover your renter's insurance. So um, that's a good thing to check with your family about. And if your family is anything like my family, I have no idea. And I would have to call my insurance agent because it's too complicated. Um, sometimes the answer is no. And then you do need to purchase or we recommend that you purchase a separate renter's insurance. Um, so there is no one size fits all answer to that. Although we do recommend that you try to get renter's insurance because things happen. Um, and you just wanna make sure that your um, belongings are protected. Yes, absolutely. This is something that's also um, enumerated on the housing and residential experience website. They have some specific suggestions for what you might make sure is covered in that process. Um, I know as people are thinking about coming to campus, they're also thinking about what they want to bring to campus. Um, and sometimes we find that the things we want to bring don't fit in a car or on a plane with us. Um, can we talk a little bit about how you ship things to campus before move in? Yes. So you will get information about this very thing when you can, so you can ship packages to campus. There will be, I believe three this year, package pickup tents on the commons and the tents are located as close as possible to your residence hall. So packages that you've had shipped to campus will be located there and you can come and pick them up. Um, there's a, if you read the road, there's a date and Natalie probably knows the date. When, what is the date, Natalie? It's August 2nd. August 2nd is when you can begin shipping packages to campus um, and we'll collect them and then you'll come and pick them up. Um, what you ship is, is largely up to you as um, long as you are ready to cart it to your room. Um, and so, um, you know, depending on where you're coming from, you might ship more things or fewer things, but, um, but it's, that's why we have three package tents because it is something that people commonly do. There are also this link I just dropped in the chat to mail services. Um, there are also some guidelines around when you should ship things and how they should be marked um, for those different service options they offer. Um, I will note that if you are coming early for a program like international student orientation or um, another pre-approved early arrival, we do want you to write early arrival on your packages so that we can make sure those are set aside um, and you can access them before the normal move-in day. Um, it looks like there is a question in here about renting a microwave or fridge um, and what that looks like, kind of same, um, same vein as preparing for that move-in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, O'Hare is going to be the site that's updating what they have available and what their resources are. And so um, I would be surprised if it's full already, but I am not in charge of O'Hare. And so I would check. Again, refresh and see if it's still full, but any questions that you have, you can, O'Hare has their own contact as well. They are, there's real humans behind that email. They absolutely will respond. And so those kinds of questions are really good to direct and they will, they'll let you know what the current status is. Yeah, great. And what about, you mentioned, we're going back to shipping. You mentioned shipping things that, you know, I've purchased, I've labeled it, I've sent it to you. What about things through sites like Amazon? So, um, so if you if you're shipping it to campus for move in, that you want to pick it up and put it in your your room, it really doesn't matter where it comes from. Come from anywhere. Just follow the instructions from Vanderbilt Mailing Services. After move in, um, you can have anything shipped to campus you want. It will come to students' mailing address. Um, we do have on campus on Peabody campus and on main campus. We actually have Amazon lockers. Um, but sometimes those lockers are full because we have lots of people shipping things. And in which case, um, Amazon knows that they're full. And so then you just ship it to the student's mailing address. Um, so you can, you can really ship anything. Uh, good to know for students that um, even though you live on Peabody campus, your packages go to what is called Station B, which is the post office on main campus. It's actually attached to... Um, one of the dining halls called Rand. Um, and so if you are shipping something really heavy, it's a walk back. There are dollies and things that you can borrow, but you know, if there's something that you want for move in, especially something that you think is heavy, I recommend that you sort of plan in advance so that it's actually here as close to your residence hall as possible 
as opposed to something you have to cart over. It's not a terrible walk at all, but it's kind of a long walk if you're carrying something heavy. Right, there's a great question in here about laundry. We all want, we all want to wear clean clothes. Um, so is laundry free? Uh, yes, so the, the machines in the residence halls are free. Um, there is also a laundry service that is not free, but that students can sign up for um, if, if you're so inclined. So um, not every single residence hall has laundry facilities. This is a source of great sadness and consternation. Um, but if you are in a residence hall that doesn't have laundry facilities in your basement, you are directly next door to a residence hall that does have laundry facilities. And it is a great opportunity to make friends with people in a different house. Um, so students seem quite clean. They seem to make it work on campus. And if you are interested in that laundry service, um, that is through Tide Laundry. And there will be someone here in the Common Center on Movement Day where you can sign up for that service as well. Um, there's a great question in here about where classes meet. Do first year classes typically meet in the Commons area or on main campus? Yeah, that is a great question. So um, the classes that meet here on the Commons are almost exclusively classes that are through Peabody. So Peabody College has all of their classes here. So if you are coming in as a Peabody major, you will find a lot of your classes are here on Peabody campus. Um, although even if you are a Peabody major, you would be taking classes offered by other colleges as well. And so everyone at some point is gonna walk um, to main campus. It's not a long walk, um, but some students will have more classes on main campus than others. Um, vision seminars are almost always located here on the Commons. So there's very rare exceptions where we don't have them here on the Commons. Um, but typically students are walking back and forth between main campus and the Commons. If you are a fast walker like myself, um, I can walk from the like from one end of campus all the way to the other furthest end of campus in about 15 minutes. Um, students regularly tell me that that is not true. Um, and so if you are a more deliberate walker um, and you don't like to be rushed, then some students bring bikes or skateboards or scooters to campus. If you bring any of those things to campus, it is important to know that with the exception of a skateboard, those things cannot be stored inside the residence halls. Absolutely not under any circumstances. There's lots of signage. So you're gonna keep them outside and you wanna get a really good lock um, just to make sure that it's there in the morning when you return. You also wanna register bicycles and scooters, those sorts of things with the Vanderbilt University Public Safety Office. And you can do that in the Common Center on move-in day or on their website. I'm a big fan that way. If something does happen to it, they can find it for you. Um, there's a question in here about the weather, which is uh, always a fun experience in Nashville. What's the weather like at the end of the fall semester? Do students need heavy coats? Yeah, that is a great question. So um, the weather is really variable in Nashville. Um, we absolutely in August get really hot, humid days, and we absolutely in the winter in December and January get very cold days. Um, I grew up in Michigan. And so um, what to me, Nashville feels like um, Michigan weather more with, with um, a much shorter winter. So we do get real winter here. Sometimes it snows. Um, but what I personally love about Nashville is that the days of winter, you'll have like three really cold days and then it will be back up to 50. And then, so it's unlike Michigan where it's like gray and freezing the whole time. Um, so it's usually um, right around fall break when you would really hope that you have like pants, <laughs> no shorts um, and, you know, a little bit heavier gear for sure by the time students come home for finals, if they're coming home over the winter break, you are gonna want a heavy coat. Um, I mean, heavy depends on where you're from. So we had a big ice storm this year and there was this hilarious post on Facebook that said, um, we're in for major winter weather. Um, Southerners, do not leave your house. Northerners, you're gonna need your big coat. Um, and that's definitely true. You do not need your big Michigan coat in Nashville generally, but you are going to want some sort of warmth. So if you're from a southern, a more southern state than Tennessee, send some pants and uh, and a coat with your students. 
especially if um, if there's no plans to return home before Thanksgiving, I would I would send some heavier clothes because students do often find that they are wishing for their coat before Thanksgiving. So we are right at seven o'clock and I wanna be mindful um, of everyone's time. I see one last quick question that I wanna make sure everyone knows because it's directly relevant to res colleges. Um, and that is um, who gets to attend which study breaks? And so I think this is a really good note to end on. So every single thing that we host in residential colleges is open to all students campus wide. So we are not in the business of asking people not to show up to our events. And so study breaks are a great example. Students absolutely can and do go to study breaks in other houses. Um, memorials, study break is called Memorial because they have s'mores really every single week. And um, you can smell the fire from anywhere on campus and like, who doesn't wanna make a s'more? And that's fine. And that's the point. The point is, to meet other people and form community. So there's really no rules that prohibit you from attending anything that you want to attend that residential colleges host. The only exception is when we just have space limitations like the Dean's dinners and then it's first come first serve. So um, again, if you um, have remaining questions that you feel like you're not finding the answers to on the welcome website or on O'Hare's website, please feel free to contact us. You can call um, the hotline, you can chat with Cornelius, you can check, um, or you can email us at commons at vanderbilt.edu. And we have a whole staff. And so we try to respond to people as quickly as possible. So thank you for joining us tonight. I am really looking forward to meeting you all in person in a few short months. And I hope you have a fabulous summer. Have a great night. <laughs>